In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this really cool parallax effect with multiple layers in PowerPoint all the way from scratch. Now to make this tutorial, I'm going to split it up in three parts. First, we'll look at where we can find the images or create them. Secondly, we'll look at how we can put things together in PowerPoint. And then thirdly, we will look at how we can animate it to create that parallax effect in the slides. And then maybe fourth, I'll also add a transition of how you can transition to multiple slides or normal slides afterwards. That's also something you guys ask a lot. Now let's maybe start with a breakdown of the slide to see what sort of components we need. First of all, we need a background image, the skyline of the city. Then we need a metro or a tram that passes by. Then we need that bench with a couple sitting on it and some trees on the sides that you can see. But then there's also this layer in between with the fence or the sidewalk behind which the tram sort of passes by. So those are the five elements that we're going to look for. Let's start with the first one, which is the skyline. And for that, I'm going to start in Unsplash the image database. You can use any one that you like, of course. I'm going to type in New York City skyline and then maybe narrow it down to Brooklyn. So we have a Brooklyn view that Riverside. I'm going to choose the free images and then the orientation landscape because we want a high resolution image that we can put on the full screen slide that doesn't reduce really quality. Then I'm going to scroll down and see whichever one I like. Now you don't have to look for the perfect image. You want to look for an image that sort of feels right. Let's say this one, because we have a lot of people at the bottom and things going on, but we love this top part and that's the one I'm going to use. So you sometimes also have to look for a part of the image that you like and you can work with. So I'm going to download this one in a large resolution and then I'm going to jump into PowerPoint and already add that to the slide. So here in PowerPoint, I want to set the layout to blank because we don't want anything. And I'm going to drag in the image, put it in a corner, right click crop and then set the crop marks to the edge of the slide. Then I'm just going to position it a bit until everything nicely fits on the slide and the people in the bottom they will be hidden with the other layers so that it doesn't matter too much, but you can always scale it up a little bit, the crop marks, and then use that part that you want. So here we don't have too many of the trees, which is good. We have a little bit of the skyline, a lot of sky. That is what we want. Now for the next part, we need to look for that train or that tram. And that one I'm going to create in ChatGPT. So let's jump into ChatGPT. And here I asked it to create an image of a traditional yellow metro from New York City, viewed straight from the site. That is important that we don't have an angle to it. And we want no background, completely in view. That is also important. Now, this was the first one it generated, which already looks quite good, I would say. No background, so that's pretty convenient. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the bottom half light gray and make it look and feel a bit used. So it's not a very clean train, it's more rusty and it feels kind of traditional and authentic. Now this is what it came up with. It's not entirely what I want, but I kind of like this image. It feels realistic, it, I like the color balance and I think we can work with this. So also for this, you don't need the perfect image. Sometimes you just need something good enough that you can work with and edit. So I'm going to download this and then jump back into PowerPoint. Here we're going to create a new slide, make it blank and I'm going to drag in the image with the carriage. Now if we can see, it does have a background. So in the second version, I forgot to mention that it needs to be removed background, but we can also do it here. So I'm going to picture format and then remove background, mark areas to keep, and then sort of mark the parts that you want to keep in the image. Everything purple will be removed. So I'm going to mark those things. And then once you're happy with the selection, you press okay. You can see it's maybe not perfect on those parts, but since it's a moving image, that will be quite good. So keep image, and this will give us an image without background, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to copy this. So control shift and drag or option shift on a Mac and then rotate flip horizontally. So this way we sort of create that carriage effect. Now I want three carriages, not two. So we're not going to skip on that part. We're going to do it as we want. So I'm going to split it up a bit, create a copy in between. And here I'm going to crop some of the sides off. Crop that in between those windows. If we do it here, we have that bottom part. So I want to have it as realistic as possible. So crop it in between windows. I repeat that for the other side. So if we now put this middle carriage, we connect it here and we connect the other one. This already looks quite good, but if we want to perfect it, I'm also going to crop the windows from the first one and this one, that small part of the window, and then just connect everything. And if we now scroll back, this looks quite good. It will be moving. We have three carriages or a longer version. I think this will be perfect for us. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to group everything together, so select everything, right click group, or use the shortcut control or command G. Now to cover up that metro, we needed that sort of fence, that sidewalk to make that balance or that distinction between the metro and the foreground. So that we're going to create in a very clever way in ChatGPT as well. So let's jump into ChatGPT. And this is basically what I asked. I got this image that I found online, which I kind of liked. The fence, the sidewalk, I kind of like this. But as you can see here, the angle is totally wrong. So we're not going to use this one, obviously, in the image. It will look a bit weird. So what I asked it to do is to make an image of this riverbank sidewalk, full straight on view, no angles. That's what we want. Remove the background and only keep the ground pillars slash fence. Didn't really know what to call it. And I remove everything else. So this is the image that it generated, which I think is pretty cool. So that's what we're going to use. And we're going to download this one. Now I can already tell that this will be a tricky one to remove the background from since there's a lot of small elements. And if we do this in PowerPoint, I don't think it will give the cleanest result. So for that, I'm going to jump into Canva. So let's download this one and jump into Canva. And here I'm going to drag in the image and put it on full screen. We're going to drag it a bit towards the bottom and that we have it like this. I think that's good. But you can see it has a background. If I put some background color on here, you can see it it's not transparent. So what we want to do is we select the image and click on background remover. Give it a few seconds to load. And there we have it. This is a pretty clean cut. That's what we want. You can see the details. It's incredible how it does it. Way better than the PowerPoint version for now. So I'm going to delete the color, do it like this, go to share, download, make sure you check transparent background. That is important. And also check PNG because if you do JPEG, you won't have that option. You need to select PNG, transparent background, and then download. You save it on your computer, and then we jump back into PowerPoint. Now here, we're going to drag in that image that we have created and put it on the slide. Now you can see this already starts to look quite good. Next, we only have that couple sitting on the bench. And also for that, I'm going to use ChatGPT generator. That is easy. So for this one, I use the prompt an image of an elderly couple sitting on a bench, view from the back, a wide angle shot, so everything is in view. And this is what it came up with, which I think is pretty cool. So it has no background. So I'm going to download it and jump into PowerPoint. And also here, I'm going to just create a new slide and drag in the image that has been generated. Now for the last part, we're looking for those trees. And for that, I'm going to use a different step. So you can choose whichever one you like. You can also generate it in ChatGPT. But I'm going to use a different database and I'm going to use free pick for this one. So let's type in tree and then look for a nice tree with no background, which I think this one looks quite good. It's a white background, so I'm going to remove it in here. This is a pay tool. Um, I use it quite a lot. So if you want to use it, you can get a license or look for the free images that they have available. And then you download PNG and then jump back into PowerPoint. And also this one, we can just add it to the slide. I'm going to crop it so it's easier to work with and easy to select. So now that we have found all the different images or generated them, I gave you some options. We can now start putting things together on the slide. So let's start with the second chapter, which is compiling everything on the slide. And here we're back in PowerPoint and everything starts from this base image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this second layer. So I'm just going to copy it or cut and paste it on the slide. Now we see this is a bit hard to select everything. So we can't really select the background. So I'm going to crop and crop this here. So we have easy to select layers that is always nicer to work with. We can select the background, the foreground, and now we can just crop the background and sort of put it a bit higher if we want until we have that realistic feeling to it. So I think this is quite good. We see a bit of the riverside. We see the skyline. Everything looks like it's nicely angled. Now we're going to add the metro. So let's add that and scale it up until it also has a sort of realistic size to it. You can see it's quite a lot larger than the slide, which is good. So I'm going to right click and send backwards. So it's behind those fences, that railing and drag it to the side. So we can already see it. It can nicely pass and that's what we want. So I'm going to put it off the site. Now, a quick message for those of you who want to become a professional slide designer in under 30 days, because my course is now live that teaches you all the fundamentals you need to become a professional slide designer. The cool thing is you can apply it to any sort of slides, whichever industry you're in, whichever tools you're using. Once you master these principles, you will never forget them. You can apply them to any software, any tool, any presentation, any slides. It's a 30 day program that you can follow. And at the end, you will master all the skills you need to become a professional slide designer. So if you want to learn more about the program, make sure to click the link in the description below. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now get the couple, copy that and paste it here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Again, looking for a realistic size where everything nicely overlaps. I think that really gives that cool, realistic effect. And then copy the tree 
and let's paste it a bit on the side. So it sort of covers up the edges a little bit. You can always crop the images if you want. So you have a clean cut on this side. And then let's maybe do it like this. Arrange, rotate, flip horizontally, and then make this one a bit smaller. So not everything looks exactly the same. You can also adjust the crop so it's more or less cropped. I think this looks quite realistic. So those slides I can remove. We no longer need the elements. We have everything here on the slide as we want it. Now let's add some text layer on that. So I'm going to add a text box and here type in New York. I'm going to use the font Poppins, make it white and use a sub font extra bold and I make it quite large. Center it in the middle and you can see it's a little bit hard to read. So if it's hard to read, you can always do a few things. You can right click, format shape, go to text options and give it a little bit of a drop shadow. So maybe a drop shadow to the right. This already makes it stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to give this a different color. So we have that connection with the tram coming by. I think that really adds to the branding. And then add one more text box with the keyword city. Let's make it white, quite large. And I'm going to use a playful font, sign painter and center it in the middle. That can overlap a little bit. And also here, give it slight drop shadow. So it jumps out a little bit more. Now for the text layers, I want to order them or put them a little bit backwards. So I'm going to right click, send to back, all the way to the back. This means the image is now up front. So I'm going to send this one to the back as well. So we wanted to have that in between or just in front of the background, let's say. So I'm going to copy or select the text elements and you can see it now can shift behind that place. And that's what we want to create. So now we have created this slide. I think it's time to move to the third chapter, which is going to be the animation part. And for that, we can do a few things. I'm going to show you a version with morph for the newest versions. And I'm going to show you a version without morph for the older versions of PowerPoint. So let's start off with the first version. And for that, I'm going to duplicate this starting slide. And if we want to apply the morph transition, we want to have the first slide in the starting state and the second slide in the finishing state. So then we apply morph and everything sort of moves from one to the next. So that means on the second slide, we need to move that train from left to right, right to left, that is, and move it just like this. So it goes off the frame on the other side. And then also for the text element, we want to appear that or flow that upwards a little bit. So I'm going to select the text elements and drag them off the slide. They can be quite far so that we have that order. So we first have the train passing and then only then we have the text coming up. You can put it closer together if you want to have it appear faster. That is totally up to you to decide. So if we now apply that morph transition and I'll put a little bit apply morph, that goes quite fast. So I'm going to set the duration to five seconds and then look at a preview. So here we have the opening slide. And as soon as I click, the train now passes by and we can also see that text arising, which is pretty cool. Now this is only the first part. We don't have that real parallax effect yet where we see all the layers moving a little bit that creates some depth to it. So for that, we're going to change the end state or the beginning state. You can play around with both. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create that zoom effect on the second slide. So this already is pretty cool, but if we want that parallax effect, that moving of the different layers, we're going to reposition and crop some of the elements on the beginning state and the end state so that there's a difference between the two and that also changes. And that really gives that 3D dynamic feeling to it. So on the first slide, I'm going to the background image. So let's right click crop and I'm going to scale this down just a bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Now I'm going to move to the second slide. So here we have that zoomed in version on the city skyline and I'm going to select the different elements. So this wall, for example, and I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger. So zoom in just a little bit. Same for the trees. You can make them one a bit larger and a couple as well. If you hold control shift, then you can scale it from the center. So if you hold control shift, you can scale it from the center and you don't scale it to a side. So that is pretty convenient. Just going to increase it a little bit. The tram I'm not going to touch since we don't want it to become larger. And if we now preview this again, we can see we have the opening slide. And as soon as we click, we get that movement of everything of the different layers and that title appearing, which I think is super smooth in PowerPoint. So this is how you create that really cool effect. Now, if you want to transition to a regular content slide, for example, there's usually one simple trick I use, and that is going to be the push transition. So I'm going to create a new slide. So not a title slide, but a content slide and add your headline here. Of course, you want to make it look a bit similar to the to the content, but I'm, I'm just going to show you the example. 
If you add your content here and you go to transitions, you can use a simple push transition, which I think still looks pretty nice. If you then upgrade the background a bit, let's slightly darker and maybe add some, some of the same colors to it. There we go. And for the transition, one and a half seconds. And if we then have a presentation, this is your opening slide, let's say. You click, everything nicely appears. You have that dramatic effect on your slides. And then if you click once more, you can just transition to a regular content slide. It doesn't have to be too fancy with other transitions. You can do a regular fade or a push transition, but this is how you could transition to regular slides. Now for the older versions of PowerPoint, I'm going to use a little bit of a different effect. We're going to use the animations that we have in place. We're not going to have that parallax zoom effect, but we do going to have the animation. So which is pretty cool. And for that, I'm going to, let's say, copy the first slide and let me make it clear that these two are the morph ones and this one is the, the animation without morph. So the text, I'm going to put that back right here and let's animate the text already. So animations and let's do a float in animation on both. Go to animation pane and we have the timing. We do a 0.2 delay on the city part. So we want to reverse that. So no delay on the first. This happens with previous and 0.2 second delay. Now we want the text to fly in on a click. So do New York, the first thing we do with click on click. So if we have a slide and we click, then the text flies in with that little delay for the city, which is pretty cool. Now we want to have that train animated as well. So we select the grouped part of the train here and we're going to zoom out. You can always use that toggle here at the bottom to, to zoom out. And now we're going to add a path animation, draw a line, drag somewhere on the image. So I'm going to use the middle of the image. I click and I hold shift to move it to the side and sort of move it enough that it passes the entire screen. You can see this red dot gives the end state. So you can just release that whenever the train or the image is past everything that's happened. Now we want to drag this in the animation order to the top and the duration can be five seconds, also very slow. Smooth end and start, you can choose that if you want it. I'm going to do a smooth end so it sort of feels like it's going into the station. Now this happens on a click and then the New York, that can happen with previous maybe, but then we add a delay of four seconds. So the animation is five seconds. So after the animation is passed, the train or the text comes up. Now that also means we need to set it because now the timing animations, I'll put it on full screen. The timing animations is we have the grouped item. So the tram moving, we have the New York going at four second delay. And then we need the city, not at 0 0.2, but 4.2 second delay. So after the train and after the New York. So let's preview that. And here we have the couple sitting. And as soon as we click, the train passes, which is pretty cool. And then we have the text and the title appearing. So this is how you can do it in the multiple versions of PowerPoint. So it doesn't matter which one you have, you could do this animation. Now, maybe for some troubleshooting, if you have issues with the morph transition and it sort of fades or it doesn't work very well, what usually is the case is one of two things. One, your layer order isn't the same between the start and end slide, or your grouped items aren't identical between the two slides. So that needs to happen before the morph to work correctly. What I suggest you do if you can't really figure it out is make the first slide, make it perfect for you to lay out, duplicate that slide and only shift around with the objects. So don't change the layer order, don't change group items, don't change text, just change around the positioning and then apply morph and it will work on your slides. So that is usually the issue when morph doesn't work. So thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. I hope you liked it. It was quite a long one. If you want to see more about PowerPoint, make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.